Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to the second installment of the Zoom in on the Halal Metropolis. My name is Jenna Shami with the Halal Metropolis team. For those who are new to the series, Zoom in on the Halal Metropolis is a video series where we take a closer look on how the Muslim communities of Southeast Michigan are coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. For returning viewers, thank you for joining us yet again. Today, we'll be speaking with Naveen Elder about her master's in public health and health management and policy from the University of Michigan and her current work with the CDC Foundation. Naveen, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, Jenna. Nice to see you. Nice to be talking to you again, even though it's through Zoom. <laughs> I know. Nice to see you too. I miss you so much. How's everything? Alhamdulillah, it's good. It's, I mean, it's COVID. So like, you know, how good can things really be at this I time? Know. I know. But it's it's going, alhamdulillah. Family's healthy. Everyone's like, everyone's doing good. How about you? How's your family doing? Alhamdulillah, everyone's doing good, you know, just staying at home, doing school. I know. That's how it is. But alhamdulillah, like, can't complain. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the thing that, like, I'm trying to go for. Is every like, everyone's like, oh, so how how's your life now? It's like, how do you think it is? Like, <laughs> we're all in the same boat right now. Yeah. yeah. But alhamdulillah, that's good. Alhamdulillah. That's good to hear. So I want to first start off by asking you, like, what made you want to pursue a MPH in health management and policy? Mm -hmm. So, um, so like a lot of, like a lot of Arab and Muslim kids, like you, you grow up thinking you're pre-med and you want to be a doctor since like elementary school. Like since then, like you're yeah. planning. I, what, I, what you <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were, we were there together. Yeah, so yeah. like, you know, exactly how it is. So, um, I, I wanted to do medicine and like really like gung ho about it for years. And then once I started to, to started to get more exposure to it, I realized, um, you know, it's not exactly what I thought it would be. And similar to what we, what resonated with, with you and I before is realizing that there's so many other factors that contribute to someone's health, um, that you can prevent, prevent people from getting sick, preventing, uh, that, that burden of disease, all the, the expenditures that are poured into, or I mean, that are a result of, of just chronic disease nowadays and, and um, injuries as well. And so I started looking more into public health. I ended up switching my major. Um, and then I just looked at, well, who, like what, what like public health schools are around me or where can I even get an MPH? And so I came across Michigan and I thought, okay, that's cool. And originally I wanted to do epidemiology. And so um, I think I ended up going to admitted student day and I realized, okay, I'm not as blown away by this as I thought. It's important, but I think I wanted something broader. And so I was like, you know what, let me just try going to, to health management policy, like the HMP side and, and just like kind of see what it's about. So I went to that admitted student day and I was like, dang, I think this is what I want. And so, um, I, and it was funny because my brother told me, he's like, listen, just apply to all the programs at Michigan School of Public Health. He's like, even the HMP one, like you never know what you're gonna like. And so I have to credit it to my brother um, because I made the switch to HMP. And I, I think what resonated with me was that it's, um, it just does a good job of, of really building that, like the foundation of public health from in, like incorporating management, but incorporating policy as well. Um, and I think that I, I feel that I can do more with that degree. Um, it gives me more versatility and uh, especially for someone who doesn't know what their, their long-term plans are yet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I literally, that's like the same sentiment I felt like I was pre-med and then I decided to do public health and I was thinking of EPID and then I was like, okay, let me explore more. And then I found like health behavior, health education. Cause again, it's like more versatile, more broad. And like, I love EPID and everything, but I figured you could do like so much more. So like very similar yeah. to your like story, which is so cool. I'm like, Jenna, we're the same part. person. Like we do, we have to get over that. We're the, know, we're the exact same person. I know. And the HMP department is like amazing. So I'm so happy. Yeah. So how was your experience at U of M? And like, how was graduating during the middle of a pandemic? Did, did we graduate? Like, did we really? I, know. <laughs> I mean, didn't feel like it. <laughs> you know, like I, so here's the thing. I, I think, um, one of the perks about being from the school of public health during a pandemic is that you just have this understanding like, okay, this is the problem that we have. Um, and just this strong sense of what public health is and what public health means to you, because that's what you were studying for two years. You just realize like, this is a public health crisis and you're able to just kind of comprehend that. I just feel like for me, it's kind of like, okay, this is like, now it's time for us to just, just to step up to the plate. Yeah. Um, so 
like, especially having the knowledge of public health, whether like at first it was just conversations in the house, like being someone who studied public health and my brother studied it as well. So just trying to explain like what we're thinking to our family and to friends and relatives. And I feel like it, it's just interesting because it switched from being a student to being public health professional, mm -hmm. like right away. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it was sad not graduating formally, but at the same time, like we had to get to work. So I had to be clear. Oh yeah. I mean, it made it like, it showed like the importance of like what we were going in. Like, you know, like it showed the importance of public health. And I was like, wait, like, wow. Like we're actually like living like a public health crisis right now. And like, yeah. and it actually made people understand what public health was. So like, there's, that was like nice to have. Exactly. About. Oh my gosh. Like, so my mom has just resented the fact that I, that I went from pe like pre-med to public health. And so this was like my time to just rub it in and be like, mom, <laughs> see, like, this is what everyone's talking about public health. You can't get away from it now. You can make a career out of it. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I know. So yeah. and, like, there's so many careers like needed now. Like there's like it, so many opportunities in public health right now. So, yeah. And that's the thing is like, I, that's, that's what I love about public health is that it's not just one specific path that you're going to follow. There's going to be different opportunities that you come across. And the fact that we can work on an, like an array of different projects um, in different fields of public health, I think that's just amazing. It, so it doesn't get boring. Oh yeah, I always tell people my career trajectory isn't going to be linear. It's going to be multifaceted because like public health is just so fast. <laughs> 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 I just tell people. Right. Yep. So um, speaking of work, um, can you tell me a little bit more about the CDC Foundation and like what you're doing and how you guys are coping with COVID-19? Yeah, so um, after COVID, uh, so I had, I originally had a position, um, like during school that was, that was set up, but then because of COVID, it, it had to be deferred. And so I was looking for other jobs and I came across the CDC foundation and I thought, okay, like, let me try to see what this is about. And they had tons of different roles. And so, um, what the CDC foundation did is that I should probably back up a little bit. They, they hired in, um, COVID surge staff. So they hired in tons of, tons of folks and they deployed them to different sites. Um, so they're they're a national organization, but they also work internationally as well. So they're doing amazing work. And so for me, um, I chose to be I chose to work at the Detroit location, so the Detroit Health Department. Um, and so the work I'm doing now is is more um, uh, it's my title is health communication specialist, but it's more I feel more like a COVID educator. So we're trying to work with the community. Um, and you would think that so many months into the pandemic and people are, you know, it, it's shocking to find that people are still, there's this um, knowledge gap in what people understand about the pandemic, the pandemic, but now it's, it's about, well, what are people understanding about the vaccine? And so our team is trying to really um, go into our communities, mainly virtually at this point, unfortunately, and trying to educate people and provide them with the resources that they need in order to understand, okay, how do you, how can you live your day to day? If there's organizations, how can they um, operate and still and operate in a safe way? And so I think it's it's interesting because we're working directly with Detroiters um, who who have always seemed to have some, you know, um, you know they've seemed to be at a disadvantage in so many different ways. Oh, yeah. But it's also refreshing because when you look at the tri county area. Um, so when you look at Washtenaw, Oakland, Wayne, um, and Macomb, Detroit has the lowest positivity rate of all those countries. Mm -hmm. I, oh my God, county, sorry. <laughs> um, so the fact that, you know, they had, so they had, uh, you know, I, well, I think it speaks to the fact of just how strong Detroit can be mm -hmm. and just how seriously they're taking this. And so it's, it's so refreshing to see that a city like that that, uh, you know, they're leading the nation in, in what they're doing in their practices. And now even vaccine, um, how they're distributing vaccines now. Yeah, actually, like, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because we, in one of my, um, my classes, we learned about, we talked about like how like Detroit was like one of the hardest hit cities in the nation, but then how they literally just like picked up and now like they have like one of like, the lowest positivity rates. So like, honestly, like the community work and like the community coming together was like yeah. very, very vital. So um, you mentioned vaccines. So, like, how is, how has that been like the vaccine rollout? Because like you hear so many different things and so many people trying to get the vaccine. So how has that been? Oh my God. I think, I think it was, it like, it was always crazy. So when the, because there was such a lack of direction from the federal government, it's kind of like everyone's scrabbling just to figure out what's going on. Um, 
And so it was just, it was a complete mess. But what's nice to say is that Detroit really got on it. And they said, you know, like, how are we going to figure this out? And now they have the TCF center, which was formerly known as Cobo mm -hmm. Hall, where they're doing like, it's a, it's a mass vaccination site. And the way that it's running, it's just, it makes you proud to see. But, you know, something that Mayor Duggan said too, was that, um, you know, not every city is as fortunate as Detroit to have this huge indoor parking lot where they can really, where they can do something like this. Um, but I think that it was a genius idea and thousands of people are getting vaccinated now because of it. And um, again, it's, a, it's another win for Detroit, like another win in the sense that Detroiters are getting what they finally need. They're getting recognized for the work that they're doing and they're still going strong. And so I hope that what we're gonna be seeing is that positivity rate and the number of cases just going down because of how, um, how receptive they've been and, how, and just how much Detroiters care about what's going on right now. Oh my gosh, that's amazing to hear. I heard about the TCF Center and like how it was just like this big vaccine campaign. Yeah. And like, I just like it's right now, like everybody's just really trying to get that vaccine. So I, it's like amazing to hear like the work you are doing with the CDC Foundation and the Detroit Health Department. So that's amazing to be in. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. That. Yeah, of course. So, I know you mentioned like you're still like unsure what you want to do with the future, but do you have any ideas of like where you want to take your work? Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I think it goes back to why I went into public health to begin with is that you can do anything with it. And so I think what I, what I told myself was that the first maybe like five or so years, I really want to ramp up my skill set in terms of what I can, um, what are the skills I can offer to any organization um, uh, that I'm working with. So that's what I'm trying to do. And I think that starting with the CDC foundation, partnering with the Detroit health department, I'm really um, I'm fortunate to be able to work with like communications, work with outreach, work with education, because slowly with every job you have, you're going to keep creating a different skill set. Sure. Um, so that's kind of short term what my goal is, but I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. But I'm I'm so but I'm excited for it because yeah. if there's too much planning involved, it's it just gets boring. Oh yeah, no I, one I, wants I, to follow that. Oh yeah, I feel you. But that's like exciting though. Like, and I agree. Like, especially like with your work right now, you are really getting like you get to see how like um organizations at like the county level and at the city level are like run and then you yeah. get to like see how like everybody communicates with each other like what makes a good plan what makes a bad plan and like how do you like literally protect the public which what you guys are doing so that's like amazing so thank you so much Naveen for speaking yeah. today I really appreciate it and like honestly as I said like your work is amazing like helping um educate on COVID like that's very vital right now and especially with like the vaccine rollout like a lot of people are having questions so thank you for your yeah. work with that and I'm so excited to see what you're going to do in public health in the future we're going to be colleagues I already know it. oh yeah oh yeah I I, I already know <laughs> you're um, going to be my boss that's what's going to happen no you're <laughs> inshallah inshallah <laughs> that's right you're inshallah you're going to be my boss no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would say it's all and I just was like, yeah. <laughs> but thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, so if you are a listener and you have a story you would like to share with us or be featured on the Zoom in series, please fill out the form link below. Um, and I wish everyone safety and health. Until next time, salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Bye.